Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, The Secret Lives of a Teenager. The young man wrote away at his love letter. He had known this girl for some time now and was very affectionate and familiar in his writing. He had begun to go with her as part of a dare from one of his friends. Why would dating this girl be the subject of a dare? Because she was not Catholic and had no intention of becoming one. The young man knew the danger of dating outside his religion. He was guilty enough about it to keep the affair secret from his family. He finished scribbling his letter to her, which was about as sappy as you can imagine, coming from an 18-year-old. He then pulled out another piece of paper and wrote a letter to his mother. He had much to share with her. Currently, he was staying at a mission with two Jesuit priests. Although he had initially treated his stay with them like a vacation, Grace had found him. His meditations were bearing much fruit. He found himself drawing deeper and deeper into his prayer life. He told her about his intention to make a very good confession soon and receive Holy Communion. These words would no doubt comfort his mother. She was a very devout woman and eager for her children to follow the way of perfection. The young man took both letters, put them in envelopes, addressed them, and sent them off. It wasn't until the Jesuit priests received a concerned letter from his mother that he realized his mistake. The young man had swapped the letters, sending the letter intended for his mother to his girlfriend and the one for his girlfriend to his mother. His mother was devastated. She had had some inkling about this girl, but this confirmation still hurt especially how he had tried to hide his actions. She was very disturbed by how familiar and flippant her son was with this girl. His girlfriend, on the other hand, was disgusted. She had never seen this side of her boyfriend. Why was he gushing over this nonsense? And why should she be dating someone who was so focused on prayer and confession and all that other silliness? She was not interested in becoming Catholic, and she was not interested in spending any more time with someone so deep in Papist practices. She returned all the letters and gifts he had sent her. It was over. Honestly, this was all for the best for the young man. His familiarity with this girl was clearly at odds 
with the life of devotion that he was cultivating. In fact, soon after this, he began expressing interest in joining the Jesuits. He would go on to study, be ordained, and work abroad with the Jesuits before being sent back to his home country. He arrived home just as the church was driven underground by the anti-Catholic government. He ministered tirelessly to his flock in secret for months until he was finally captured and executed, arms outstretched in the form of a cross, shouting, Viva Cristo Rey! The Jesuit priest and martyr, Blessed Miguel Pro. And for this week, that's the word. John Peter, at this point, I was curious to see how many people got before the reveal that this was about Blessed Miguel Pro, because as many stories have we shared about this holy young priest, I was thinking we should say that this podcast is called that's the word featuring Blessed Miguel Pro. His stories are just so easy to write. They write themselves. To be honest, it was a delight to record this one because it flowed so naturally. You can just see him doing this. And you can also see the terror on his face when he realized what had happened. But for us today, it can maybe be harder to understand his mother's disturbance at receiving this letter. Aside from perhaps anything that he said to this girl, what is the concern about her being non-Catholic? Well, this is something that's not taught well today, but the church still maintains that a Catholic should marry another Catholic. In a document from 1966, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, are they now a dicastery? Everything, I think, has turned over to a dicastery. Okay, the dicastery that was the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith said... The church considers it her most solemn duty to protect and safeguard the gift of the faith, both for the spouses as well as their children. And for this very reason, it strives in every way so that Catholics do not enter into marriage with non-Catholics. And this is not something from the Council of Trent. This is something from after the Second Vatican Council. This is very practical advice to only date Catholics, because if you're going to enter into a lifelong contract with somebody and live together for the rest of your life until death do you part. You really want to be living with someone who shares your values and core beliefs. If those don't align with you, that makes life so much more difficult. It's not impossible. The church does provide dispensations for people and does give permission for Catholics to marry non-Catholics, but she very much urges that we not seek that out. So whenever you do marriage preparation, if someone is marrying a non-baptized person, you have to get a dispensation. And if someone is seeking to marry a baptized non-Catholic, you have to seek permission. And that permission or dispensation is given by the bishop or his delegate. Now it's trivia time. Dun, dun, dun. Last story's trivia question was, What work? Does this quote about hatred of sin come from? The answer is St. Francis de Sales' Introduction to the Devout Life. And I think John Peter would agree with me that if you have not read Introduction to the Devout Life, this is a very, very wonderful work to be able to understand how to grow in a life of devotion and deepening our relationship with Christ. This story's trivia question is, Under what pretext was Blessed Miguel Pro executed? That question again, Under what pretext was Blessed Miguel Pro executed? If you think you know the answer, email us or contact us on social media and let us know. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story at thunderrock.org. 
where you can see the pictures of Blessed Miguel Pro that we've collected over the many stories that we have told about him. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.